Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews and on-site training. In this episode, I am going to introduce you or reintroduce you to a project that I've been working on lately, as well as talk about Hello World and what the options are, what it means, maybe have some fun with a Commodore today. All right, so we're all familiar with Hello World, and it generally ends up looking something like this. Now, if you know me and you know my channel at all, you know that I'm going to absolutely despise this option for several reasons. The first is this end L. This doesn't teach a new user of C++ anything useful at all it's definitely better to learn that you can do a, an explicit new line and get the new line break that you want. I also vastly dislike getting people used to having using namespace in their code because then they end up tending to put this at every file everywhere and you get lost in where did these symbols and names actually come from. So I don't like using namespace and I really don't like endl and I really don't like the two of them together. This one gives you much more obvious use of what's going on here. Now, I tend to actually personally remove the return to zero because return of zero is implied from our main function here, but I don't really like having return zero or not having return zero there. It's probably worth actually mentioning if you're gonna go this route, instead of saying, oh, we return zero, why do you return zero? I don't know, we just return zero. We could actually use the exit success macro, which is defined by the standard for us. It's unfortunate that it's a macro, but for this case, it actually makes sense. We're telling the reader of our code that we are in fact exiting main in a success scenario. We didn't have a failure. If we really wanted to say exit failure, we could do exit failure, and then we're gonna see that we actually get program returned one here instead of zero. So this, I think, makes it just slightly better. But, you know, if you watched my episode, which I did so very long ago, on don't forget about puts, then you would know that we could do something like this instead. And this then doesn't have any of the questions at all about what the meaning of these left arrow insertion operator things are, nor does it have the question of end L or new line or whatever, because it's gonna write a string and then implicitly put a new line on it. Now, of course, we forgot whatever header includes exit success. So just to prove to you that I'm not making things up, we can see here in CVP reference that it is actually comes from the CSTD lib header. We have this program, and if we were caring to look at the disassembly at this point, this is incredibly small and simple. This just is a call to puts with the offset for this string, and it's gonna print this string. That's all it's gonna do, and we get exactly what we wanted here. If we were to go back to the IO stream version, you don't want me to. It's terribly sad. It has global variables and all kinds of nonsense and generates considerably more code. Now, in an alternate reality, we can do something like this, which gives us such a higher level view and formatting strings and whatever that we can work with. And still that just prints hello world. And, but we could do something, you know, like, this if we really wanted to and have it say hello jason but there is something notably lacking from all of these examples and that is specifically the fact that i can't say where on the screen i want these words to go i can say print them and it's going to print them somewhere if you're developing a gui application it's going to go to some console window that you may or may not have access to at the moment it's going to print as the next line and it's going to move everything else up probably it sure would be cool if we could print it where we wanted to 
Which brings me to the latest version of my Commodore 64 C++ work that I've been doing. Now, if you saw the Rich Code for Tiny Computers talk that I gave at CBPCon 2016, then you're gonna be familiar with some of this, but I have been working a lot on it lately, probably too much on it lately, really. What we can do with the Commodore, because we know exactly where memory resides and we know how to write into memory, is we can just put hello world wherever we want to on the screen. So I have a couple of helper functions here. And the first one is uh, puts, and this is says, write this string, and notice I'm using a C++ 17 string view here, at location x and y, and uh, the start of memory for the screen buffer is hex 400, so I'm just adding that y times 40, because it's a 40 column display, plus x, so I get the offset I want to on the current line, and then I'm doing a mem copy of the data that's in string view for the length of the string view to this particular memory location. And this memory location is just a way of taking a memory address and giving me back a pointer. Now, interestingly, I need volatile here because I need to make sure that no write is considered a dead store and is eliminated by the compiler. And this is actually the correct time to use volatile. But then I have to use const cast actually to get rid of volatile. When we think of const cast as just a way of getting rid of const, it's actually a way of getting rid of volatile as well. So I'm a little bit questioning this particular line of code and hope to think that maybe I can come up with something a little bit better later on. But I'm doing a memcast, a mem copy to this memory location and this much data, and the memory location is calculated here by the x and the y offsets. And so I'm writing hello Commodore five times. Then I'm just going do 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 do, and it should make a little line of them down the screen, diagonal. So at the moment, this is all very much in flux, but this is the command line that I have. I am actually pumping this through AVR GCC. If you watched the original version of this stuff, you would know that I did a 386 translation. I decided that that ultimately ended up becoming a dead end because the 386 instruction set is far too complicated and its calling conventions don't make a lot of sense from a 8-bit small stack perspective. Any function call that you make in 386 has to push all of the values onto the stack and then call the function. Well, it turns out that the calling conventions that GCC uses for AVR actually uses registers. And there's 32 8-bit registers, which works out nicely because we have one 8-bit register on the 6502, but we have an awful lot of zero page addresses that we can use to pretend like we have 32 8-bit registers. So if I were to compile this hello Commodore, I've got AVR3 mode, verbose asm, uh, wall, w extra. I'm compiling but not linking. I'm outputting to the console. I'm outputting assembly and I'm doing an O3 optimization level. I'm including the standalone lib std C++ for AVR that already exists out there on GitHub. I'm compiling in C++ 20 mode and I am putting it in M tiny stack. This is a flag to tell GCC that I only have 256 values available on my stack, which is perfect for the Commodore because it only has an 8-bit stack. So tiny stack. I am then teeing this out to avr.asm so that I can see this intermediate code gen generated. And then I am piping that through my 6502 for C++ compiler. That's what I've renamed this project. You see here x86 to 6502. It has been renamed 6502 to C++. And I am teeing that out to 6502.asm. And assuming that that whole thing executes, I am then assembling with the XA cross assembler for 6502. I'm telling it to interpret all characters as Petsky screen codes specifically because that is what I want to write to the video memory. That one is probably going to end up changing at some point in the future. 
and I'm doing dash M, which allows me to have more complicated comments on the end of my 6502 assembly lines. And then if all of this succeeds, I am immediately launching the program with X64. And I expect it to succeed. Okay, so there we go. We've got hello Commodore, hello Commodore, diagonal down the screen here. Now, interestingly, it looks like with encoding for this video going, I can't quite hit 100% emulation speed. Uh, but that's fine for the sake of today. And I can actually notice that the emulation speed goes down while I am talking, which I find even more interesting. But either way, we got Hello Commodore printed wherever we wanted it to. Now, this looks like a simple program that just says 10 sys 261. So I can actually call 2061 and I am jumping directly to this memory location. That is where I loaded my machine language program and it will run this hello Commodore again. So I can scroll back up here, hit sys 2061 and I get that hello Commodore printed again. So that works. We take a quick look in the 6502 assembly that's been generated. I have merged together here the AVR translation code, the verbose assembly comments from GCC, and uh, as well as whatever other directives, warnings, and unknown things that I have at the moment. Now, the program actually starts by telling the assembler that I want to start at memory location 2049. And this is the first uh, 12 bytes here or whatever, is actually that 10 sys 2061. And then I load a couple of values um, that represent the current stack pointer, and I set the zero register. And I just realized that these two stack pointer register things here are actually uh, bad. That should probably be deleted. Hopefully it's not causing any other problems later on. So I have an ASCII string that is hello Commodore here. This next statement jump main is going to just make sure that no matter what the compiler put ahead of the program for us, we can still jump down into main. And then at this point, we are into the land of code that GCC generated for AVR for us. Now, I'm going to have this up on the screen exactly long enough so that you who are experts in 6502 assembly can scream at all of the inefficiencies that we have going on here, but not long enough for you to actually come up with any specific suggestions for how to make it better. But the AVR GCC compiler inlined memcopy for us. So it's definitely a minor problem that we have. But we can actually come down here and see that this is our for loop. And this is the loop from 0 to 5. And this is where it is then calling uh, the memcopy function over and over again to actually write that hello Commodore to the screen. The entire thing works out to 111 lines of assembly, but a bunch of this stuff becomes comments. And we can actually see it's a 161 byte program, which I assure you is considerably smaller than any other hello world program that you're going to see in C++. And it has the advantage that we can specify exactly where we want it to go on the screen. So just in case you think that this is perhaps maybe a little bit contrived, let's just go ahead and make it a slightly more interesting version, I guess. Um, how do we want to do this? So it actually writes maybe in a loop around the screen or something like that. All right, so there we go. We've got some sort of cascading 
something filling the screen for our hello Commodore input here. Uh, and it looks, you know, actually kind of interesting, kind of demo-y or something a little bit, but not really that exciting, I guess. Now, if you're curious, there are definitely lots of features missing. For example, the 6502 nor AVR3 have a multiply or divide unit. So if you want to do a multiply or divide, um, it better be something that the compiler can do at compile time or something that the compiler can optimize at compile time. I have not yet had the chance to put in those intrinsic functions, um, but otherwise most things seem to be working. No floating point yet. That maybe will be coming at some point in the near future. But I'm hoping to use this as a little bit of a playground for future episodes, and we'll see what we get and what we think. And now if you go and find this project on GitHub, be warned, I, I want to stress this, this is not at all ready for normal primetime consumption of this tool. And I am working on it daily and making all kinds of changes to it. So if you go and create a pull request, expect that it might almost immediately be um, broken from a merge perspective because of other changes that I've made. So just so you know, uh, if anyone else wants to take a look at this, but I think that it's got a pretty good um, baseline here and should be fun and interesting for future episodes. And I hope you think that this is as fun as I do. I know that I don't sound terribly excited at the moment. That's because I've been putting in far too many hours working on this and I'm a bit tired, but I think it will be fun. And I have an idea for our absolute, actually very next episode that I am going to demonstrate here with the Commodore for a new C++ 23 feature that I'm going to be demonstrating in the Commodore. So be sure to subscribe and check out that episode when it comes out. Mm -hmm.